everybody who's logged into Teams. We're, we're going to um, ask people that are in Teams to turn off their videos, please. Um, but uh, during the question and answer section, we'll put the videos back on, but we'll have everybody on mute. Um, so, David, we, we're going to um, uh, leave you on because you're one of the presenters, so to speak, with us as well. So, we'll get the microphone. Yeah, okay. Your mic, your mic, your mic. But your, but your, 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 your sound is sound. Okay, so we'll start the recording here now. So David, if you can hear us, give us a thumbs up, please. Brilliant, okay, fantastic. So this is going to be a blended session. So we have our teams going, and then we are going to be also doing our presentation live. Okay, we're ready to go. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for attending our workshop. Um, this is uh, going to be a one hour session where we are looking at artificial intelligence and using that in a Socratic discussion circle. Um, hopefully everyone now has logged into Teams because we're going to be asking you to post any questions or comments into the Teams text chat through your phones. Uh, but as you found, we are going to need to have your speakers off, please, so we don't get an echo loop. Uh, Socratic discussion means that what we're trying to do is not have this as a lecture with a talking head, but we're simulating a circle discussion that Socrates would have with an open-ended problem. And the topic is going to be the issues around the conference theme of learning technologies. What's the future? Hopefully, everyone's been able to log into the, our Claxon um, account. And uh, we want to introduce Sam, who is our representative, our corporate uh, partner in this. So we'll be doing our voting. We'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute um, for each section of our presentation. Hopefully you won't need too much luck. Thank you, David. All right, and now we're going to have the presentation of our speakers. Hi, my name is Louise Morrow. I have been a graphic designer for 30 plus years, and I am a UX design consultant. I have also been a photography stylist and part of a film crew, creating films and music videos. My hobbies are trying to fix my cars, riding my BMX and downhill bike, and growing fruit and vegetables. I work full-time as a senior lecturer in music and multimedia practice, and I freelance for Learning Design Solutions UK. My topics that I will share with you today are the state of the social media mind, who's more mechanical, an AI, friend or foe, I'm Mike Howe. I've spent my life in education as a radio producer, as a writer for children. I've been a video journalist working in higher education with lecturers. I teach student teachers how to write, so I have three professional writer's tricks for you. 
I suggest using just three skills for good communication is more useful than watching AI rewrite your text. The reason is this. I observe students spend their education listening to the spoken words in their head and trying to turn those spoken sentences into written English for their essays. These experiences lead me to believe understanding how your brain uses both spoken and written English and how you move between the two styles is much more important than watching chat GPT improving your text. In short, is learning writing skills better than watching chat GPT do the work? Hi, I am Stephen. I am a qualified and experienced telecoms engineer and systems engineering expert, coupled with experience and qualifications in marketing and education. I can provide a uniquely personal insight into the generation and behavioral development of AI systems, having taken part in experiments to test the efficacy of such AI and highlighting its current and future impacts. I studied at the University of Bournemouth and the University of Greenwich, and have worked with a range of organizations across the world as well as teaching at Imperial College and King's College, both in London. All right, so now this is the part where you're going to be participating. We're going to go through session one, which is the uh, three uh, of our three topics. And each of the presenters will be giving you their version about the AI and the future tech that we're uh, going to be exploring in this workshop. At the end of the session, then Sam's going to be um, showing you how you can go into the Claxon uh, uh, website and be able to then vote on who is human. So after you hear the three presentations, you need to decide you're going to vote and we'll calculate that and we'll see at the end if you're right or not. So this is our version of the new Turing test. In contemporary society, ubiquitous engagement with handheld devices is conspicuous. This phenomenon prompts inquiries into the psychological states and cognitive activities of individuals. Whilst impossible that such interactions foster inspiration, collaboration, and community integration, critical questions emerge regarding the extent of genuine learning and creativity facilitated by these technologies. While certain skill developments may be acknowledged, the utility of these proficiencies in securing employment warrants scrutiny. The prevalence of social media platforms further exacerbates tendencies towards impatience, irritability, and cognitive distraction, raising concerns about the compatibility of such attributes with workplace demands. Settleton's discourse is an examination of agency within the digital landscape. Will the content creators and algorithms wield greater influence over online experiences as a pertinent inquiry? Algorithms, constituting the backbone of artificial intelligence, AI, orchestrate content personalization through data driven mechanisms. These algorithms, governed by preset directives, drive AI systems to disseminate information and formulate decisions. The resulting personalized content inundates users, potentially impeding independent cognitive exploration and critical inquiry. Consequently, the reliance on algorithm driven content consumption prompts reflections on individual capacity for creative thought, discernment between veracity and falsehood, and susceptibility to social comparison and used self doubt. Amid these deliberations, the fundamental integrity of personal reality and cognitive autonomy comes under scrutiny. Contemplation on the veracity of information consumed, awareness of individual cognitive processes, and cultivation of inner dialogue become imperative. The prevalence of passive engagement and the blurring of distinctions between authentic experiences and curative digital personas necessitate a reclamation of agency and introspective engagement. This call of the cognitive awakening underscores the importance of cultivating an active inner voice, resisting passivity, and embracing boredom as a catalyst for introspection and self-discovery. Everywhere you look, humans have their heads down. Are they sad? Are they afraid of eye contact? No, they are fixated on their smartphones. One may say that they are being inspired, collaborating, belonging to a community. But are they? Are they learning? Are they being creative? One can argue that there is development in learning skills, but are these skills beneficial enough to get them a job? With social media being on demand on their fingertips, humans become impatient, angry, distracted. Are these the right skills to hold down a job? But who is in control of social media? Content creators? Or is it algorithms? Algorithms personalize what you see according to the data they collect. AI is driven by algorithms. 
They are a set of instructions telling the AI how to perform specific tasks. These tasks enable the AI to learn and make decisions based on data. Is it personalization? Everything is tailored to you, served to you as you scroll through the endless sea of content. Does this not prevent their minds to look for themselves, to research on their own? Are you a creative thinker if you are driven by algorithms? Can you compare the truth between the lies? Do you spend your time comparing your life against others that are seemingly having the best time ever? Self-doubt? Do you even know what is real and what is fake? Have you even thought about it? Do you even think? Do you have an inner voice? What do you do when you're bored? Do you know what boredom is? Is your inner voice awake? Wake up. Okay, and the last one. In an era dominated by scrolling screens and constant connectivity, the detrimental effects of social media and smartphones on the youth psyche cannot be ignored. From stifling individual opinions to undermining critical thinking, these digital tools wield an insidious influence over young minds. But lurking behind the curtain of lights and sheds lies a sinister force, algorithms. These algorithms, the puppet masters of our online experiences, dictate what content inundates our feeds, shaping our perceptions and molding our thoughts. They thrive on engagement, manipulating impressionable young users into a vortex of endless scrolling and mindless consumption. As a result, originality and independent thought become casualties of the digital age, drowned out by the cacophony of algorithm curated content. Consider the impact on young people's opinions. Instead of forming their own viewpoints through research and reflection, their spoon-fed a diet of tailored content designed to reinforce existing biases and preferences. This echo chamber effect stifles dissenting voices and breeds intellectual conformity, eroding the very fabric of democracy. Moreover, the ability to think critically is under siege. With algorithms serving up a steady diet of sensationalized headlines and clickbait, discerning fact from fiction becomes an uphill battle. Young minds, accustomed to instant gratification and bite-sized information, struggle to sift through the noise and separate truth from manipulation. It's time to unmask the true villains behind the social media facade. As algorithms tighten their grip on impressions of youth, it's imperative that we reclaim control of our digital destinies and foster a generation of independent thinkers capable of challenging the status quo. Okay, so we're ready now for our first vote. If you can go to your Klaxon Link. Okay, I just pulled it up on the end of the screen, so you should be able to get through right now inside of the app. Alright, and let's see. Maybe that I can do it too. So, so, um, in chronological order, the list. Louise was the first presenter, Mike was the second with the soup, and then Steve, uh, or excuse me, Steve was the last one with the soup. So who is human? Take a vote. All right, we're going to carry on now while you are making that vote. And we are going into the next topic. So who is human? Here we go. Certainly, when it comes to crafting persuasive writing, employing thinking techniques will significantly enhance the impact of your message. Firstly, strike for clarity and conciseness in your sentences. By using shorter and more direct sentences, you can ensure that your points are communicated with precision and force. This approach can make your writing more persuasive and easier for your audience to grasp. Secondly, focus on using strong active verbs to drive your points home. By selecting powerful action words, you can infuse your writing with energy and conviction, making your arguments more compelling. Additionally, employing vivid and specific language can help paint a clear picture in the minds of your readers, allowing them to better understand and connect with your ideas. Furthermore, structuring your writing with a logical flow and providing compelling evidence to support your claims can greatly enhance its persuasive impact. By organizing your thoughts in a coherent manner and backing them up with relevant and credible information, you can bolster the credibility of your arguments and sway your audience more effectively. Lastly, consider the emotional appeal of your writing. By incorporating relatable anecdotes, powerful imagery, and thoughtful language, you can create a more emotional connection with your readers, which can be a potent tool in persuasive. 
use of writing. In conclusion, by employing these strategies, utilizing short and more direct sentences, selecting strong verbs, using the language, structuring your writing effectively, providing compelling evidence, and appealing to emotions, you can create writing that is more persuasive and impactful than chapter. Are you honing your writing skills more effectively by observing chat GPT in action? Writer's Trick 1 suggests placing the subject at the forefront of your sentences. How frequently do you initiate a paragraph with a clear declaration of its subject? How often do you commence a sentence with as, when, it, or worse yet, moreover? In today's fast-paced world, we require concise and articulate English sentences, paragraphs, titles, and subtitles. There's no time for meandering, as ChatGPT tends to do. Instead, let's try this simple sentence, the cat sits on the mat. By starting with the, followed by a key word, we can instantly convey the main idea. Have you noticed any ChatGPT sentences beginning with the? Is learning writing skills better than watching ChatGPT do the work? Writer's trick one. Put the subject at the start of a sentence. When did you last write a paragraph beginning with the subject of the paragraph is to and continue with a key idea you wish to communicate? How many times have you started a paragraph such as one of the subjects I wanted to talk about first was something I thought about last week? It is something around writing clearly and simply. How many times do you start a sentence with this? When? It or worst of all, moreover. Crisp, clean English sentences, paragraphs. Titles and subtitles are what is needed in our busy world. There is no time to ramble, as ChatGPT can do. Instead, let's try the following simple sentence. The cat sits on the mat. The cat is the subject. The subject at the beginning of a sentence is the natural way we speak and we write. Put the at the beginning of the sentence and make the next word a key word. The main idea you want to communicate and everyone knows what you are talking about right away. Try spotting a key idea at the start of ChatGPT sentences. Do any of them start with them? Okay, take a look at that one, and we are going to go to our next class and go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so again, if you think that the human presentation with Louise, both on Louise, Mike, and Steve. At the end, we're going to be tallying up everyone's vote, and then we'll show you the actual real presentations. Okay. And let's carry on to the last topic now. Let me just double check with the people at home. Dave, David, everyone's uh, being able to hear the presentation all right? Can, can you give me a thumbs up on that? Good, okay. I just wanted to double check uh, before we get to the end. Here we go. Last uh, topic, number three. How do we know what we know? We might ask. Perhaps one answer to that question is through our use of research, our methodologies, our data analysis, and our confidence levels that drive answers and conclusions and perspectives and new questions. As such, we have built societies, theories, and humanity based on those findings, confidences, and conclusions, and it is fair to say we've built things in the absence of research and data. So, what happens if AI shows us that we are wrong, not just a little bit wrong, 